a susceptible wheat variety may contain thousands of sporulating pustules of leaf rust. At maturity, millions of spores are released from these pustules into the air via wind currents. Once airborne, these spores serve as the inoculum that will infect other leaves on the same plant or the leaves of neighboring plants. Dispersal of these spores to new host plants is vital to the dynamics of an epidemic. Spores are deposited on leaves and other surfaces in the field along a dispersal gradient that extends away from the point source of inoculum. Some of the spores released from an infective leaf will be deposited by gravity or rain onto an uninfected leaf of a nearby or distant plant. After inoculation, the occurrence of favorable environmental conditions will allow the spore to begin a new cycle of infection. During periods of moderate temperature and extended leaf wetness, the cycle begins as a germ tube emerges from the spore. Growth of the hyphal strand continues across the leaf surface until it contacts the guard cells of a stomate. Once the guard cells are detected, growth of the hypha stops and the fungus will use this natural opening as a means of entry into the plant. At the tip of the hypha, a specialized structure known as an apressorium begins to form. The apressorium swells and once fully formed, gives rise to a narrow hypha that grows through the stomatal opening and into the substomatal cavity. Once in the cavity, the hypha swells to form a large cell or vesicle. From this cell, the fungus begins to grow. As the fungus grows and spreads, it encounters cells inside the leaf. Prior to penetration of the cell, the fungus forms a cell known as a hostorial mother cell. From this cell, a narrow penetration peg or hypha is produced that functions to gain entry into the cell. Once inside the cell, the hyphal tip begins to swell and a highly specialized cell known as a hostorium is produced. The fungal cell wall and the cell plasma membrane are never in direct contact as a matrix is formed between the cells of the two organisms. The fungal hostorium produces numerous compounds. Some compounds are enzymes needed for food acquisition from the host plant, while others, called effectors or elicitors, may elicit or suppress the host response to the presence of the pathogen. In a susceptible response, also known as a compatible interaction, these effectors are not recognized by the hosts thus allowing the fungus to go undetected and disease to develop. If this occurs, the hypha of the pathogen continues to colonize the intracellular spaces in the host leaf and the infected cells remain alive. Since the discovery that disease resistance is a genetic trait, Plant breeders have attempted to find and incorporate resistance genes into plants. The type of resistance often used is single gene complete resistance. A gene of interest is identified in a wild relative of the host and is introduced into the DNA of the susceptible host by conventional breeding or biotechnology. Note, this is not the result of a mutation in the host DNA, but an actual substitution of one gene for another. 
Once this gene is incorporated into an acceptable cultivar, it codes for the production of a product called a receptor that specifically binds with specific pathogen molecules referred to as effectors or elicitors. When the receptor and effector bind, a cascade of events occurs that leads to rapid cell death. This incompatible interaction is known as a hypersensitive response. This response is successful in stopping growth of the pathogen and no disease develops. This incompatible interaction is very specific and occurs as a result of a gene-for-gene -gene interaction. That is, the interaction of a product of the host resistance gene and a product of the pathogen A virulence gene. If the pathogen is unable to overcome the effects of a resistance gene, the pathogen will not survive and the disease will cease to be a problem. Unfortunately, many resistance genes rapidly become ineffective. Pathogen races arise due to mutations that naturally occur in the avirulence gene, resulting in the loss of the avirulence gene product. If a spore containing a mutation in the avirulence gene lands on a plant that has the corresponding resistance gene, this spore now has a competitive advantage over all the other spores that do not have this mutation. The spore will germinate and begin growth just as the wild type isolate did on a susceptible cultivar. The germ tree will produce an apressorium and penetration will occur as before. The fungus also will grow and produce a hostorium. But since the DNA of the pathogen contains a mutation in the A virulence gene, no effector is produced. In the plant cell, the resistance gene product is still being produced. But since the effector from the pathogen is no longer there, the specific gene-for-gene -gene interaction does not occur. And the outcome again becomes a compatible interaction and disease develops. The pathogen continues to grow and obtain nutrients until growth just below the epidermis results in the production of a new set of spores that are now capable of infecting all plants that contain the newly defeated resistance gene. Therefore, a new epidemic is started by the new race of the pathogen and a new resistance gene is needed to stop its progress. In summary, the gene-for-gene -gene hypothesis has been instrumental in explaining the basic interaction that occurs between plants and pathogens, and in assisting breeders and pathologists in developing more effective disease management strategies.